socialstudiesgames.us. That's where you find all my social studies information. Today, your learning goals. List the parts of the preamble. We did the parts of the Constitution, the preamble, the articles, and the amendments. Now we're going to go to that first part and then list the parts of it. So if you're thinking bullet point, well, what are the bullet points inside the preamble? And then I want to be able to describe each of those parts. And not only describe, we want to take it up a notch in our learning. We want to take it up to the application level of Bloom's levels of learning and be able to apply these ideas to real life. We want to be able to see real life examples of how they exist or how they could exist. So I'll start the timer. Timer starting. Three parts, Constitution, Preamble, Articles, Amendments. We've gone over those. We've gone over being able to describe them. They define and explain the government. Another way of looking at this and categorizing the parts of the Constitution is to say that the preamble answers the why. Why did we create a government and why do we have a government? Every single day, you could ask this question, say, why do we have a government today? Look at the calendar. What day is today? Today is the 20, no, it's not the 21st. It's the 8th. Today's the 8th. Oh, on the 8th. Why do we have a government today? You look at the preamble and it's going to answer all those questions. Oh, we have a government because we need to provide for the common defense. We need a military. We need domestic tranquility. We need peace in the United States. Same answer every single day. The how then explains how the government does it. It's the instructions. It's the directions. It's the blueprints. Why do we have a government? We need a military. How does that work? You look in the articles and it explains exactly how we establish a military, the rules of the military, who's instructing the military, how the military can and cannot go to war. The how is written in the articles, the details. And the amendments, it's simple. It's all the changes. So let's focus mainly on the preamble today. We'll rip out the first paragraph of the Constitution and read it to you. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. We do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. What? What? Yes, it's kind of a clumsy paragraph, and I did not read it in the best way possible. So let's make it a little bit easier. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, we the people want to establish justice. So we the people, in order to get a better country, we the people want the government to establish justice. We the people, in order to better make a better country, we the people want to ensure domestic tranquility. We want the government to ensure domestic tranquility. We the people want the government to provide for a common defense in order to form a more perfect union. We the people want the government to promote the general welfare in order to form a better country. We the people want the government to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves. We want them to protect our rights and we also want them to protect the rights of our posterity, which means future generations. We want them to protect our rights and future Americans' rights to form a better perfect union. So we ordain and establish this constitution in America. We make it official as long as you do these things. So that's why we wrote the constitution. That's why we created a government. That's why we have a government today. But this is all an old white guy language from the 18th century. Let's make it easier to understand. Again, the preamble is the intro that states the purpose of the U.S. government and its goals. So we the people. What does that mean, we the people? Well, it, it's defined as the consent of the governed. That's a fancy social studies word that you'll probably see on a test or maybe see on a news channel. Well, what does that even mean? Consent means permission. We the people. We are giving permission to the government. We are giving them permission to make rules. We are giving them permission to make laws. We are giving them permission to enforce the laws and decide if people have broken the laws. We're giving it away. We're giving it to them. Governed, that's us. We're the people. We are governed. They govern us. So the people being governed, that's us, the people being governed, being told what to do. I know it's terrible to look at that, but that's kind of what we're doing. We're letting them tell us what to do sometimes. We are allowing them to tell us what to do. The governed are giving consent. The people, fancy word for people, are giving consent. We are giving permission. We are allowing them to have the power. We are forfeiting our power. We're giving our power away to them. They have our permission to do that. We are giving them, that's crazy. Why are we doing that? Well, because with that power, they can do the following things. If we do not give them permission, if we do not give them power, they cannot do these blue bullet points then, and they cannot do them now. It's 
It's what we have to do. You've already done it. Every day in this country, you allow the government, you give them permission to do these things. What are these things that we, the people, are asking for? Well, the first thing that we ever asked for was to form a more perfect union. We still ask for this today, but mainly when we talk about form a more perfect union, we, the people, at the very beginning in 1787, gave them permission to throw away the old government, throw away the Articles of Confederation. That's what it was called, our original government. We said, we are giving you permission. You have our consent to take the old government, rip it up. We need something new. The next thing that we said, all right, we're going to create a government. And this is what we, the people, want. We want you to get rid of the old one, but here's also what we want. We are going to give you power. We're going to allow you to govern us as long as you do the following things. We're going to give you your, our power as long as you create fair courts and fair laws. It's very simple. I don't need to go into any more detail. We were pretty upset with the old system, not necessarily the Articles of Confederation, but when the king in England ruled over America, we didn't think that things were fair. We wanted a better system. We want our own government where laws are fair, where the court system is fair. I don't really have to go into more detail than that. We, the people, want domestic tranquility. Huh? Domestic means home. Tranquility means peace. We want peace in the United States. So we are giving away our power as long as the government uses that power to provide peace in our country. The simplest form is we allow them, we give them permission to create the police so that the police can make our country safe. We are giving them permission to create firefighters to keep our homes safe and peaceful. We're giving them all sorts of power. With that power comes responsibility, but we are giving them that power to street lights. At night, it's dark. It could be dangerous. We give them the power and the responsibility to build street lights, to power the street lights, and to change the bulbs. You might be saying, well, why are we giving away this power? Well, who else is going to keep peace in the streets? Can you, are you going to change the light bulbs? Are you going to build the power bulb, the street lights? Are you going to spend the money to do that? Are you going to take the time to do that? We, the people, can't do a lot of these things. So we give our permission for them to have the power to do these things. And they have a lot of responsibility there. And sometimes they fail. They're not perfect. The government is not always perfect. Common defense. I, we can't protect ourselves from outside countries. Can't do it. So we, the people, give the government the power to do this, to create a military. This is the why we are creating a government and why we have a government, to protect us from outside countries. Now, the government's not perfect. you got to realize that sometimes the government fails. The government doesn't always establish justice. They're not always perfect, and we have to change laws throughout time. You've got to realize that, one, the government is people. It's of the people, by the people, and for the people, and guess what? People make mistakes. So, first of all, the government's never going to be perfect because it's made up of people, and people make poor choices. They make bad decisions. The other thing you got to realize is that it's hard to make everyone happy. The government may make fair laws for me, but someone might not agree with those laws. So, the government can fail just make a mistake because they're people. But also, you can't make everyone happy because everyone in this country is not the same. We disagree. What I think is a fair law, someone may disagree and say, no, that's not a fair law. Someone may disagree with, maybe there's too much police. Maybe there's not enough police. It's very hard for the government to make everyone happy. So you have to realize that's just the way it is. It's never going to be perfect. And then uh, two famous examples of how the government failed to protect us from outside enemies. September 11, 2001, uh, the terrorist attacks. The government failed to protect us from an outside enemy. They're not perfect. We make mistakes. December 7th, 1941. Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Another example, the government did not fulfill its power. We gave them permission. We've given them power. They need to exercise that power to protect us, but they are not perfect. Promote the general welfare is an issue that we're going to talk a lot about. So we, the people, have given the government power to make laws, to make rules, and to make our lives better. Promote the general welfare. I know when you hear the word welfare, you think of a lot of different things, but what I want you to think of, and that's not completely far off from what we're talking about, but what I want you to understand welfare in this moment is the word welfare simply means good or well or to fare well, which means to be well. We want the government to promote a good society. Do what they can to make our lives better. And that's also going to create issues because, again, like I said before, we don't believe in the same stuff. We are different. What I think is good, you may not think is good. And what you want, I say, I don't think I want the government to do that. Last, this one's not really hard to argue over. Blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity is 
protect our rights. A simple way to understand liberty is to understand it under the concept of negative liberty. What is negative liberty? I know when you hear negative, you think of bad. Don't think of bad. Think of negative liberty means liberty is freedom from coercion. What's coercion means? Liberty means freedom from outside influence, freedom from outside restrictions, freedom from government restrictions. You are allowed to do what you want and no one's going to mess with you. You have freedom of speech and no one's going to tell you what you can and cannot say. It's not absolute, but for the most part, you can say what you want and believe what you want. You can worship whatever religion you want and the government is not going to interfere with you. Freedom from coercion, freedom from government restrictions. That's negative liberty. That's one of the simplest understandings of liberty. That's Thomas Jefferson's understanding of liberty, who was one of the guys that worked on this constitution. The issue I want to talk about is promote the general welfare. This is the one that it's vague. It's broad. This is an issue every single day. This other stuff that we talk about, we can't really argue a lot. Sure, we can say that the government fails not to do it, but we understand what justice is. We know what fair laws are. We might disagree a little bit, but we're on the same page. We're on the same page for the most part with police in the United States. You may want more or less police and how they do their job, but we all understand we want safety in the country. We want safety from outside enemies. But this one, promote the general welfare, make our lives better. How does the government do this? What is it? What is good? And this has changed over time. And the founding fathers were very smart in saying that promoting general welfare because what was good in 1787 isn't the same in 1850 and 1950 and today. This has changed over time. And as we grow and advance and change our government throughout history, we will interpret this different. Today, what does it mean? How does the government promote the general welfare? How does the government make society better? One of the ways that they make our lives better is Medicare. Medicare is health care for people over the age of 65. As you get older, your body breaks down, you get sick more, you have more hospital bills. It's very expensive. But also, as you get older, you can't really work anymore. So how are you supposed to pay for these extensive and expensive medical bills? It's very hard to do. So the government has realized, well, one of the things that we need to do as a society is pay for the medical bills of our elderly population. That's a way they can make our lives better. For the most part, people agree with that. That did not exist until 1960. So another example of promoting the general welfare did not mean Medicare in 1790. But in 1960, we decided, okay, this is what America looks like today. And so when I look at promoting general welfare, that means Medicare. And then they realized Medicaid, that is healthcare for kids and low-income families, same situation. Hard to pay for your medical bills. The government needs to step in. Situational, nutrition, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, or food stamps. Some people struggle to eat. They don't have the money. So the government steps in and provides that for them. Schools, you are not paying to watch this video. You're not paying for the internet to watch this video. You're not paying the electrical bill. You didn't pay for the headphones, probably. You're not paying for the lights. You're not paying for anything in this school. The government is doing that because they realize one of the ways that we can make our lives better is to pay for schools, is to pay for lunches, is that if you lose your job, the government will pay you an unemployment check for a little while until you get back on your feet. Subsidized housing, Section 8 housing, some people don't have the bills to pay to have shelter. And so the government steps in and says, you're not going to be homeless. We are going to give money to make your life better and we're going to get you off the street. They even help farmers because farmers have a tough job. The weather affects farmers' patterns. It's hard for them to survive. So just as low-income families or the elderly receive money from the government, so do farmers. These are all examples of how the government makes our lives better. But the question is, how do they pay for this? Where's this money come from? A money tree? What are we talking about? The way they pay for it is taxes. They take money from other people to give that money to these programs. That's how you fund it. So if someone has a lot of money, well, you're doing all right. We'll take some of your money and help out these people that may not necessarily be able to pay it. And that's fine and all, but is this making this guy's life better? You could argue that, well, yeah, he's going to be better off because if you don't do these things, you're going to have some real trouble in America. And eventually that trouble is going to affect him. You could make that argument. But this is a big issue. Promoting the general welfare is an issue that we argue about a lot. It defines who you are politically. This defines Americans and it divides Americans. Your interpretation of promoting the general welfare. What should the government do? Why do we have a government? One of the parts of the preamble is to promote the general welfare. Well, what does that mean? It depends on your interpretation. 
how and what should the government do to make our lives better? It doesn't say specifically in the preamble or in the constitution, they need to build schools, nothing about schools, nothing about healthcare, nothing about school lunch. It's not in the constitution. It's open to interpretation. We could believe that today, that could change tomorrow and it fluctuates through time. Sometimes we believe in helping out the poor, sometimes we don't. And this will pretty much defend or define whether you are a Democrat or Republican. Democrat, and this is an overgeneralization, this is very broad, so don't get offended by saying this, but for the most part, Democrats do not really mind high taxes because they use those tax dollars to help people in need. So the government is very active. So if the government has a lot of money, the government can do a lot of things. A very busy, very active government is typically what the Democrats believe in. The Republicans believe no. They want a smaller government. People should keep their money, less taxes. And when you keep your money, you can spend your money on your health care bills. You can spend your money on shelter. You can spend your money on food. You can spend your money on your farm. So Democrats typically high taxes. Government helps the people. Republicans typically, and this is an overgeneralization. Not everyone fits into these two categories. Let me keep my money and I will help myself. That's the divide. Promote the general welfare. The Constitution, this is an argument every day. You watch any news channel, and typically it's an argument over what should the government do to make our lives better. Should they give us free college? If they give us free college, somebody's got to pay for that. Everyone should get health care. You see that a lot on the news. Promote the general welfare means everyone should get health care. How are you going to pay for that? That's the argument. That's the divide. That is the issue that we will spend all our time arguing over in social studies. Very big topic, never ending topic, and there's no answer because we're talking about people's beliefs. There is not a right or wrong answer in this or in many issues in social studies. List three parts of the pre list the parts. I'm not going to go every single part, but I really, 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 some of them are really easy. They're black and white, they're simple, but really think hard about promoting the general welfare. What does it mean? And what do you believe? And could you possibly change your mind? You believe one thing today. Do you see a time in the future where you say, mm, maybe I don't believe that I'm always going to see promoting the general welfare or the idea of how the government makes our lives better. Maybe the way I see it today, maybe I'll be in a different situation in the future. Maybe I'll be really rich or maybe I'll be really poor and maybe my perspective will change.